Hi, my name is Shinelle, also known as Nurse Nell to my Instagram followers. And this is my story. So I didn't always want to be a CRNA, let alone a nurse. Um, my sophomore year, I decided that I was going to become a pharmacist, and that's what I did. I was on the road to becoming a pharmacist. No plan, really. No passion for it. And that's a no-no. Whenever you're doing something just for the prestige or the paycheck, it's a problem. And I didn't realize that until I was two years into it. Um, mostly just prerequisites, but I did an internship in a pharmacy. And just the career itself came up short for what I needed in my life to become who I wanted to be. Like I was interested in the pharmacodynamics, the pharmacokinetics of things, how drugs work and how the body works on the drug. And that part was great, but it was missing something and I didn't know what it was missing. I thought I was a shy person and now I'm sitting in front of you guys and like sitting in front of the camera right now but I thought I was shy I didn't want to have the patient interactions I didn't want to do any of those things I happened to get a job at a group home um, because they paid really well and I took care of adults with disabilities I remember this moment distinctly because it was a moment when I realized like hey nursing is for you it's in your blood um, the woman was was needing to go to the bathroom and I was there to help her, but she didn't make it. And I realized that there was another person inside of me that I didn't know existed that was caring and compassionate. And the whole thing about being shy just went out the window. I didn't even think about it. And at that moment, I knew that I needed to become a nurse and that I needed to go into nursing. I didn't know about nursing anesthesia until like some of the pharmacy students were talking about it because they were trying to get out of pharmacy as well. And I kind of just stuck it in the back of my mind like, hey, that's something that you can do in the future. Um, let's go to nursing school. But that was the whole process. I applied to three different nursing schools. One, I got a scholarship, but I would be graduating a whole year later. I did not want to do that. Um, that was the main reason why I didn't want to change my major because I wanted to graduate on time. I don't know why it was so important to me at that moment to be on time. I'm young. It's not like I had like kids or a husband or anything like that. But it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to wait. I just want to graduate 2013. I was scheduled to graduate May of 2013. Um, so I applied there. I applied to the school that I was already at, but I was waitlisted because they accepted too many of the intended freshmen. So then I kind of looked outside of my hometown to another school that was about an hour away. And I got a scholarship, I was accepted, and I was going to be graduating December 2013. It was perfect. So I get into nursing school and I just go gung-ho, signing up for everything. I became the president, I was on committees, I was a Helen Fold Scholar, so I tutored other nursing students. I was part of the Student Government Association as the nursing senator. Like, I did everything to get involved and because at that moment I didn't know who I was, I didn't know what I was doing and there was a lot of things that I wanted to change. And I was able to accomplish a lot of things for the nursing schools, for the nursing students, for my class, for the Student Nurses Association in terms of, you know, having people come in and talk about different nursing professions and different specialties, having 5Ks and fundraisers, having a graduation ceremony for the December graduates. And with the help of all like the faculty and the board and everything, I was able to do those things. So. I would encourage you to get involved, but don't let it, you know, distract you from what you need to do as a nursing student. In addition to those things, I also worked. My first job, I was a patient care technician on a step-down type of unit. 
um, and then I applied for a student nurse internship position at the level one trauma center at one of these big teaching hospitals. And I went in for the interview and I told the lady, I want the most critical unit that you have in this hospital, please. Um, I did my junior preceptorship in the ICU, so I knew, even though it was at a small community hospital, I knew that the ICU was where I belonged. I shadowed in the CVICU, and I think that day there was three or four ECMO patients. ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Didn't know what that meant or anything. All I saw <laughs> was a tube coming out of here, coming out of the groin, with blood in them, I'm like, whoa. Going through a machine, something was going on in there and it was going back into one of the tubes. So blood was coming out, going through this machine and coming back in. Then we go to the next room, there's this machine that's pumping. I'm like, what are these devices? This is insane. What are all those numbers? Why does she have a Christmas tree of drips? Like, it was exhilarating. I was so, like scared but in like the best way possible and I knew that that's what I wanted um I got a call on my birthday I, th I think it was my birthday and she's like oh yeah we put you right in the CVICU and I was so excited because I was able to get that position as a student it set me up the perfect segue into becoming a nurse on that unit I brought a notebook <laughs> to work as a student nurse intern, and I wrote down tons of stuff. I knew all about balloon pumps, I knew all about ECMO, I knew about mirinone and how it was an inotrope and epinephrine and phenylephrine and vasopressin. Like, I knew all those drugs. I wrote them down, had the dosages down. They were quizzing me, they were teaching me so many things. So, when it was time for me to step on that unit as a nurse, it was, it was the, perfect, the perfect transition for me. So I also did uh, my capstone, kind of my last little thing for nursing school in Peru, where I educated and did like hand washing and teeth brushing um, up in the mountains of Oliantentambo, Peru. And it was just a life, life changing experience. I'll have to do a whole video about that. So that was in November, December. Um, so I graduated in December. I took my boards in January. I had 99 questions on the NCLEX. I, I almost cried afterwards because I for sure knew that I failed. Like, <laughs> I was under the impression, well, all the smart people only get 75 questions. I'm not the smartest or nor the brightest crane in the box, obviously. And I got 99 questions and I for sure knew that I failed the exam. Two days later, my name was on the registry for a registered nurse, and it was the most exciting day of my life. So, I was a nurse. It's January. I started on the unit February. I did a six month orientation, and then the year after that, I got my CCRN. Um, once I got my CCRN, I really was thinking, like, well, prior to that, I started thinking more about applying to CRNA school, but I never really was, like, super serious about it at that point, um, because I was still trying to decide if I wanted to do CRNA or NP. Um, I wanted, I wanted to do the NP initially because I wanted to decrease, like, um, the incidence of blood pressure and those chronic diseases in the African-American population. Then the other side of me knew how much I loved, you know, the pharmacology and then being able to take care of patients at the same time and put them to sleep and the gases and all that craziness. I wanted to do that as well. Um, and then I started researching, you know, the nurse practitioner versus the CRNA and I realized that CRNA was for me. We'll talk about that in another video because there's a video for everything. So anywho, I decided to do CRNA. I started taking prerequisites, non-matriculated classes at the school that I knew for sure I was applying to. I think I took like 12 or 14 credits. I'm pretty sure the max was 12, but I kind of snuck in one more class. So I'm working. 
I'm working two jobs. I'm working a job in the hospital in the CVICU, and then I'm also working for a pharmaceutical company teaching patients how to use an injectable medication for multiple sclerosis. And then I'm taking um, non-matriculated classes online. So I'm doing those three things <laughs> literally like a few months after I'm off of orientation. So I'm doing that, I get my CCRN, and then I start studying for the GREs, the Graduate Record Examination. It's basically the SATs for graduate school, and I did not study too much for that exam um, because me personally, I don't do well on standardized examinations whatsoever. I'm not a great test taker either. So yeah, I got a decent score and that's all that mattered. So once I tackled that, I wanted one more thing to make my application stand out. Everyone gets their CCRN, you have the GREs, most schools require that. I have my CVICU experience, I'm not going to wait even longer to get more experience because, you know, I don't got time for that. So I'm like, hmm, they have subspecialty certifications for the CCRN, your critical care um, nurse certifications. So I decided to do the cardiac surgery um, specialty certification, just kind of like the ice on the cake and the cherry on top, little sprinkles, um, just so that there was something else that we can discuss, like, hey, so you have that as well. How was that? And it was a very helpful exam, actually. Just studying for it was a really good review. Studying for my CCRN was the best review for my interview ever. So I applied for CRNA school uh, when I had a year and a half of experience in the CVICU, including the orientation time. By the time I started CRNA school, I had about two and a half years experience and I continued to work up until a few months ago in the CVICU um, throughout nursing school. So that's how I got into CRNA school. Um, hard work and dedication. When I was applying, I think there was only one other person that or a few people that were in the program that kind of helped me out but in terms of like online resources and things like that it was just either the information was super old or wasn't relevant to my situations it was just really hard for me to find the appropriate re you know resources which is why I'm here making these videos to help you all out and to kind of give you an insight of how things work for me and how I made it through so that's how I got into CRNA school. I am finishing up my second year shortly. I'm right in the middle of my one, two, three, four, fifth semester. I think I'm looking at my calendar right now. I think it's the fifth semester. So I have four more semesters to go. Spring, fall, spring. Well, I have to finish this one. Then, yeah, summer. I forgot summer. One, two, three. Yeah, four more semesters to go after this. And it was going fast at first, and now it's really slowing down, and it's dragging, and it's getting tougher. Right now, I have classes on Mondays, principles of anesthesia and current topics in anesthesia, and then Tuesday through Friday or Tuesday through Thursday, depending on if I do a 12-hour shift or not, I have clinical, which leaves the weekends for studying because I have a quiz generally every single week. So it's getting tough. Um, I haven't been able to work too much. I still have my job as um, at the pharmaceutical company. That's how I got to where I am right now. And if you have any questions, feel free, comment below. Let me know if you would like me to talk about anything in particular. Please subscribe to this channel so I can get to 100 subscribers so I can give away something and follow me on Instagram at I am Nurse Now. Thanks for watching.